Welcome to the Home Inspector Marketing Podcast. Because you're a home inspector looking to increase your sales, improve your cash flow, and boost your bottom line, you are in the right place. For additional training resources on how you can grow your home inspection business, go to microreturns.com right now. And now, here's the podcast. Hi, this is Mike Crow, and I run a home inspection business. In fact, I've run a couple of home inspection businesses. The true joy for me, though, has been helping literally thousands of home inspectors build really solid home inspection businesses as well. We can help a single man operation be able to do over $300,000 a year, maybe all the way up to $400,000 a year as a single inspector operation. Even better for me is the 80 plus companies that we have helped be able to build million dollar home inspection businesses. I would like to help you be able to do the same thing. Hey guys, this is Mike Crow. I am the uh, father of Home Inspector Marketing. I've been doing this business for, gosh, I don't know how long, 30 plus years, and uh, it's just been exciting. Somebody the other day was talking with me, and we were having this long discussion about my book, Home Inspector Marketing Secrets, which, by the way, I think is still out on Amazon. I think you can still get it. It has a couple of website references that are out of date, but the information is rock solid. As we were going through the book, we focused in on uh, page 59, and this was chapter 10 and system number six, and it talked about making yourself more referable. Uh, The more referable you are, well, the more business you have come your direction. And there were three things, three things that I wrote down that you must do to be more referable. When I tell them to you, you're going to go, well, duh, of course. And then you're going to look around and you're going to realize that as obvious as that this is, or like Davey, the gentleman that runs Coach Blueprint here for me, likes to say, you know, is that common sense is not common practice. And I love that saying. I love that saying. And so what you're going to realize is that this is common sense. And then you're going to realize that this is not common practice. In fact, I'm going to tell you that at some level, these are fireable offenses for one of our inspectors. I mean, if our inspectors can't do these things, Not only are they not referable, after a certain point we go, you know, we just don't need this here anymore. And uh, we let them go. As one person said, we let them go find their happiness elsewhere. I got that from a Disney person. And of course, you know, I love Disney backwards and forwards and sideways. So the reason being more referable is important is because you are a direct reflection on whoever refers you. Okay, And we know that there are about 15 mavens out there, mavens being person that has an influence on a group of people, and they can refer you. And, of course, there's real estate agents and title companies and mortgage companies and insurance companies and builders, and the list just goes on and on and on. There's about 15 mavens or 15 referral sources that you can do out there. Real estate attorneys is a real good one, by the way. And one of the things that you discover is that you need to make sure that you're referable. You know, here's one of those little secrets that I'm going to tell you. You know, I hear inspectors sometimes go, you know, agents, they never refer me. They never refer me. But, you know, when their daughter's buying a house or when they're buying a house, they go, oh, hey, you know, I can't, hey, Joe, can you come do this inspection for me? You know, you're one of the best inspectors I know. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, I'm one of the best inspectors you know, but you won't even refer me. Now, here's what you need to know. I know that he may be a great inspector, but there may be also some things that make him unreferable. So let's tackle some of those real quick. Here's number one. Be on time, okay? And let me explain this really simple. I'm sure I've got it written here somewhere, but what I like to say is early is on time, on time is late, and late is not acceptable, Okay, We have fired inspectors before because we just can't get them for some reason to show up to the inspection on time, early. You get that? Okay. So one of the things that I discovered, and keep in mind that my company's done well over 100,000 inspections. I've done over 10,000 plus inspections myself in the 30 plus years that I've been in this business. And uh, You know, I tried getting there 15 minutes early, and that was okay. I tried getting there 30 minutes early. That was pretty darn good. I tried getting there 45 minutes or even an hour early. That was too much, so I went back to the 30 minutes. 
So we teach all of our inspectors to get there 30 minutes early. And by the way, here's the cool part. During that 30 minutes, we take a look at the roof. We take a look at the foundation. Now, we do termite inspections, so we're looking for termites. We get all of our paperwork ready. We get our toolbox and everything set up on the front porch. We're ready to go. So in the 30 minutes, I've looked at three of the top things that we know can cost us the most money if we miss them during an inspection. So we have no pressure or anybody, you know, giving us a kind of a time pressure thing because we're on the roof or walking the foundation. And we can look at things and prod things and maybe move things away to see things a little better without creating a lot of disruption in the thought process for people because they're simply not there. So very simple. Number one, be on time. Okay. And again, remember the adage, to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And late is not acceptable. It's one of my favorite sayings. So number two, do what you say you will do. Do what you say you will do. You know, again, this may seem simple and we say or do things without realizing how much sometimes we promise people. Anything you tell someone is a promise. Don't forget that. Anything you tell somebody is a promise. So don't forget that. So when you tell the agent who shows up at the house, you'll deliver the report to her office. She's probably expecting that report right after the inspection, not the next morning. All right. And by the way, you could tell people, oh, we'll deliver that report this evening. Oh, we'll deliver that report the next morning. And eh, you know, at least you told them. But even then, that's not the best thing that you can do. We'll talk about that more at some point. So I was up in Chicago and I was working with an inspector and he was saying, Mike, your marketing doesn't really work that well. And I was going, really what? And so we went out on some of his marketing routes. He was making several basic mistakes there. And, you know, for the fun of it, I decided, hey, I got time. Let's go ride with him on an inspection. And we went to ride out on an inspection and uh, the buyer arrived and he welcomed them. And he said, hey, you can follow me around. We'll do a great job. And I was thinking, man, this is going well. And he did the inspection in a different routine than I would have done it. But, you know, I get that. That's the old style routine. I created a new routine that it generates a better relationship with your buyer and with other people and helps make things a little more obvious during the inspection. So my routine is very unique in that respect. And then the agent arrived. Then the agent arrived and he like snubbed the agent. Oh, I wasn't expecting you to be here. You know, we'll be done with the inspection in about, I don't remember, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The agent went, great, I'll hang around, right? And then we did the whole inspection, and then he looked at the buyer and said, hey, why don't we go out to your car and we'll talk over the inspection report? And he turned to the agent and said, I'll get the report to you as soon as possible, right? And, uh, and then we walked off, and we sat in the car and went over everything on the inspection report with the buyer and left the agent standing in the house. I was like... You don't do that, man, and ever get referred again. And then it got worse. It got worse. About 1 o'clock, this was, we did the inspection about, oh, I don't know, 10, 11, 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock or something like that. We finished the inspection around 12 o'clock or so. Around 1 o'clock, I went, you know, I, he went back. He finished up the report. We talked about some of the stuff he put in the report. He did a great job. I said, okay, we're going to run this over to the agent. How are we going to handle that? We're going to email it to him. He went, oh, no, I sent it out at night. All the agents know that. I said, you really believe that the agent thinks you're going to deliver this report tonight and not as soon as you're done? And he went, yeah, yeah, everybody understands that. And nobody delivers on, you know, a site or delivers, you know, right after the inspection. And I went, wow, you're sure? And he went, yep. I went, okay. And I let it go. Well, that was about one o'clock. And then about three o'clock, the phone rings. And it's the agent. And she's going, I, I thought you were going to send me the report as soon as you were done. Are you not done yet? He went, oh, yeah, I finished the report, but I'll deliver it to you tonight. No wonder the marketing's not working. This dude's not referable. Okay? So she might use him for her inspection, you know, or maybe her daughter's. But the last thing she wants is this guy doing an inspection for one of her clients and making her look like a doofus, okay? And so you just got to be really careful about that. So do what you say you'll do. He said he was going to get the report. Everything else was still garbage. I couldn't believe how he treated her. But then he said, hey, I'll get you the report as soon as possible. And then he didn't, okay? And so... He wonders why he's not referable. By the way, that guy's long out of business. So, you know, sometimes you can't help some people. They just, they won't listen. All right. The third thing and the final thing is finish what you start. 
finish what you start. It's incredible to finish what you start. It's even more important for everyone who works with you to know that you finish what you start, all right? And I wanna give you two specific examples. The first one applies to every inspector every day. When you do an inspection, you need to make sure you finish it completely, all right? And as far as the client and agent are concerned, the sooner, the better, all right? I like to talk about what I call speed and accuracy, right? The faster you get the inspection done, the more accurate it's done every single time, the more referable you are. You just need to know that. So get the report done and leave the house the way you found it. So I made this mistake once, and uh, several of our inspectors have made this mistake as well, and I have worked hard now to build a system to address this. And so I call it a tent card. I call it a tent card. So the first time I realized it was a problem was when my dad and I were sitting in a chair in front of a house after an inspection. It was drizzling rain uh, and I noticed that the agent was sitting in his car facing us and my dad was looking through the maps go and uh, for you younger guys that's a book that had a map teaching you how to go from one point to the other. GPS didn't exist yet at that time. Anyway I know I'm showing my age but anyway dad was working on how do we get to the next inspection. Now I noticed the agent looked at us, and I said, Dad, the, the agent's kind of staring at us. Dad looked up, and he said, yeah, he's probably waiting for us to leave. You know, that kind of made sense, and so I didn't worry about it much. But then I looked at him again, and I could see he was looking at us, and then he looked at the house, and he did that several times, okay? And I will never forget. You know how you can see somebody do a body motion, and you know you can hear the sound that goes with that? So here's what I heard just by watching him. I saw his shoulders rise. I saw the shoulders, you know, go down. I heard, the, I could hear the sound and I was going, what the heck? And I heard the agent sigh, you know, metaphorically and he got out of his car. He walked up the side yard through the wet grass and he closed the gate that I had left open. Okay. And you know what? We never saw that agent again. All right. So we didn't finish what we started. We didn't put the house back exactly the way it was when we started. And if the fence had been open when we started, I should have told the agent, by the way, the fence was wide open when we got here. I don't know if they have a reason, but I'm leaving it that way because that's the way we found it. I should have told them so they would have known that. Okay. Now I'm going to give you another experience. As I grew my business and I had multiple inspectors, most inspectors probably never have this problem. Okay. And maybe you won't ever have to deal with it. If you're in business long enough and do enough inspections, I guarantee you this will happen to you at least once, if not three, four, five, six times, all right? So you start the inspection and the buyer is working with you and you look around the outside of the house and there's obvious foundation problems. And you can walk around the outside of the house and you can see the roof and there's shingles missing. It's very obvious, right? And then you start on the inside and you can't get the air conditioning to come on and it's a hot day, right? And the buyers are following you every step of the way. And then you open up the main electrical panel and there's aluminum wiring throughout it. And it's the last draw for the buyers, right? So. The buyer a lot of times will say, you know, you've done a great job, but I've seen enough. I'm kind of done here. Maybe you can give me a discount on this inspection and maybe the next one. I don't know, but uh, I'm done. You don't need to write me a report. I don't need anything. Just tell me how much I owe you and I'll write you a check, right? And you're going, wow, wow, bummer. Okay. By the way, here's a secret my dad learned. Never open the main electrical panel first. Never open open the main electrical panel first. It should be one of the last things you do so that this doesn't happen to you if there's aluminum wiring, <laughs> okay? So there's a little bit of routine secret there, all right? So keep in this mind, you know, they insist they're done. You need to go no further. They need no report. The buyers are holding their keys and they're ready to leave and they just want to know how much they owe you, if anything, you know? And maybe you give them a discount. Maybe you don't. Maybe you promise them a discount on their next inspection. I'm fine with all of that. And then what you do next, though, is the most important thing. So some inspectors think to call the agent let them know, hey, your buyer saw that there was foundation problems and roof problems, and then they discovered the house had aluminum wiring, and they said they were done, okay? Well, here's the most important part of all this. You are not done yet. You might think you're done. You might even convince yourself done. Somebody else might tell you, well, yeah, you were done, buddy, but you're not done until you produce some kind of report. Okay, you're not done until a report has been produced. You might say, but the home buyer said he didn't need or even want a report. And you know, I, I kind of got that. 
So when I first recognized this problem, most inspectors gave me a dozen reasons why a report was no longer needed. And I'm here to tell you it is needed, okay? You're leaving the agent hanging. And in the long run, you're causing the buyer a potential problem as well. Because when it hits the seller side of the equation, well, let's say they have a lot of questions and no real answers and nothing to back it up because they don't have a report. And if there's not a report, well, or not a complete report, maybe that's fine. But mark everything you didn't inspect and say not inspected and then make a note that reads something along this line. The inspection was canceled prematurely at the request of the buyer. Now, you put that on your report so they understand it wasn't you that canceled the report. It was somebody else. And the last statement is really you're there for your protection. Otherwise, the rumors will fly and it'll sound something like this. Man, the inspector talked the buyer out of the house. Get the picture? Okay, so all of this can be avoided if you simply finish what you start. So there's a lot of simple little things here that I need to make you know, all right? So most agents will use you for their own home and maybe even their daughters, but they won't recommend you to their buyers because, well, you're too thorough. Nonsense. It's because you're not referable. Okay, maybe it's because you don't show up on time and they don't want to recommend somebody that doesn't show up on time. Maybe it's because you don't do what you say you will do. Okay, or maybe it's because you don't finish what you start. Those are just three of about seven or more items that you need to know at some point. And, uh, you know, here's what the agents tell me, because I ask the agents, hey, I have a great inspector in my area and I like him, but he's regularly late and he leaves me hanging one way or another and he doesn't leave the house in the way he finds it and on and on and i and so i've sat in i'm more real estate agent circles than probably anybody you know in this industry and they say oh i don't mind using it for myself you know but i'm not comfortable recommending it to my clients it makes me look bad all right so there's two sides to every story and i thought you might like to know that one so ask yourself this question which one of these is an area in which you could do some improvement? So one of the things I try to do with my inspectors, for instance, is make sure they all arrive 30 minutes early. You ask any of my questions. In fact, we used to call it crow time. And then in our business, we now call it text inspect time because the name of our home inspection business is text inspect. So this is important. If you are not on top of all three of these, be on time, do what you say, and finish what you start, maybe a few more then you're not referable. You're absolutely not referable, okay? And so I want to make sure that you realize that. Well, there's the three must to making sure that you are referable because if you get those wrong, and your marketing might get you started, but it won't sustain you. You have to put a good inspection behind it. You have to make sure that you do the things that make you referable. And if you don't do those, well, don't expect people to use you a second, third, fourth, fifth time. All right. And that makes it really hard to grow a business. Now, I'm very fortunate. We work on doing all of these things. And so we have agents that use us 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 times a year. All right. And uh, they know that we understand. In fact, one of the things I tell them at meetings a lot of times is I understand that we are a direct reflection of you on each and every inspection. It's one of the reasons we wear professional uniforms. It's one of the reasons we show up early. It's one of the reasons that even if the inspection some reason gets canceled halfway through the inspection we still produce a report for you okay and they all go wow because we want to make sure that we take care of the home buyer the client absolutely over the top but we don't want to leave the real estate agent or any of our mavens that could refer us hanging well guys this is mike crow and we'll talk about another situation like this recently probably out of my book because i've been talking with a lot of people so i have four magic words i have the three letter word that will make you more powerful than anything else out there and then we'll talk about some other fun stuff too and it's a lot of fun i will tell you that currently i am in the process of meeting with some top inspectors three times a year for mastermind events and every now and then i will invite people to come and sit like a fly on the wall Can can you imagine sitting around some of the top, top home inspectors from across the nation and sitting around the table with them and watching what they've done and being able to have lunch with them and dinner with them and figuring out how they grew million dollar businesses, in some cases, multi-million dollar businesses. And of course, we run a multi-million dollar business. So when you come, you get to walk our business and see it and understand some of that. You can learn more about that by going out to, I think our current website is MikeCrowReturns.com. 
Mike, M-I-K-E, Crow, C-R-O-W, returns.com. I am ramping back up on my coaching business. I'm having a lot of fun. I've been helping people. and They've been having great successes. I want to see how many people I can help now. And my prayer to some degree is, Lord, let me help one more. Let me help one more. Okay? And so, with that said, the way I do that is by this simple phrase here. Be successful and be around those that are successful. Because the more money you make, the more people you can help. Have a great day, and I'll talk with you again soon. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. And as a friendly reminder, if you're looking to increase your sales, improve your cash flow, and boost your bottom line as a home inspector, go to microreturns.com right now.